So John Torres is, has been called the poet filmmaker of Philippine cinema today. Um, and as you'll see, his films are these wonderful uh, uh, mixes of observation, of reused footage, but also like spied upon events, perhaps in one of the films, it'd be like filming done at, on a set of another film. But what he does with these and mood and sound and ambiance are, are things of wonder, of beautiful spaces in which to meditate and uh, also become sort of aware of the society in which he is working, of current events in the Philippines or life in the Philippines, or as it works, of course, universally in life for all of us. So with that, just uh, please join me in welcoming John Torres. Thank you. Uh, nice to be here. Thank you to the Los Angeles Film Forum with the Michael Foundation. Um, more about this this film, um, and I won't say too much. We have a program notes, and we can all have a, a quick chat later after the film. Um, this was a project um, by an up and coming star in the Philippines, um, uh, with a kind of a crazy but ta really talented film director in the mainstream and um, actually independently as well in the Philippines called the savior of the of the of, of Philippine cinema or Messiah Philippine cinema. It was crazy. Um, they were in an island. Um, this was supposed to be a launching project for this star who produced also the the, the work. They never got to finish. Um, this was a time when uh, we were also trying to oust uh, Marcos's uh, during the People Power Revolution, and often in this island they were trying to make a film, and there was a revolt also in this in this, in this production. At the same time, in the on, in, on the other end of the island, is um, a test shoot of Oliver Oliver Stone's cartoon, <laughs> wherein other members of the crew also cross over to this project, and so on and so forth. And so it it all gets kind of um, crossed over, and we try to um, see uh, um, evolve the space. Um, crossing over and being in the middle of the sea and not um, having to finish the film. So all in all, um, we had 20 reels or so um, kept under the bed of the producer and the star and the film was deteriorating and we were trying to not make work out of this. So later we'll talk more. Thank you very much. So, um, I used to see her in the movies uh, as an actress, uh, uh, a star actually, a uh, pretty known star um, with obviously great uh, director as well, Stel uh, Saad Castillo. So um, he promised her um, this dream. Um, and I think um, so, it's there, the feel like. Um, walking the red uh, red red carpet and worrying what to say to the to the people who might ask her about the film and just saying that oh just open your mouth and from my, from your mouth my words will come out but she really believed that this this spell really um so i did not know this um, i just got a call um <laughs> wanting to have a meeting and i was wondering why um there were other uh, filmmakers who might better serve them because they're, they're more in mainstream narrative films and I'm doing what I do. Um, so it quite, quite exciting actually when I got the call. <laughs> I'm scared. But when I got there, she was there telling us about this project from 1980s. Um, and she wanted to finish the film. Um, a lot of the actors were dead, passed away the director even, um, and their faces have changed, even without, without the decaying of footage. Um, so how, how, what, what does she mean by that? Uh, what does she mean to finish? And it really was more about her personal trauma, her, her wanting to find closure, because she never had someone to talk to about this, and she never could. Um, she was always in tears. In fact, she was 
for much of our experience together was hard. Um, but she really wanted this. Um, and she shared with me like a lot of her, you know, um, things, uh, her memories, believing in those memories and wondering whether they've, they really occurred. And so what happened was uh, I gave them um, kind of um, an idea what I was trying to drive at because they have a script, they had a script. <laughs> um, it's like um, this was uh, the footage that they had, which they also showed me was supposed to be a flashback of some sort, like, mm. but um, it totally departed from the original script. But that wasn't my thing and um, it was not possible and they couldn't find a director and they also didn't believe that this was the story that they wanted to tell. I told them, maybe let's think of it another, in another way. Maybe we can all um, gather the actors together in a room and um, see what we have. I already saw like um, how many minutes of footage, all unedited um, from the can, um, processed and transferred to, to video, um, no sound. So, well, they agreed to that process and maybe it would be more like a documentation of a gathering of trying to see what happened and trying to be together for each other. Um, and so that was, that was the plan. Uh, when we went there, um, sure enough, a lot of them um, have already retired, but also some of them are, were still continuing um, being actors. Um, and so naturally when you gather a set of actors and performers, they, they perform naturally. <laughs> they, we had, um, mics um around the, the around the room and they could actually um have the mic and kind of um tell stories to each other as they're kind of being flashed memories um don't necessarily um piece together smoothly actually they contradict with each other you say oh you were here um i didn't i didn't believe that you were here um oh this is our experience and so on and so forth the plan was for me to kind of see what we could do with the voices that spoke. I, I just asked them to speak in the present tense and kind of because they were performing, it was like, oh, it's, it seems like me coming from the 80s and now surrounded by VHS tapes and also uh, I know how it is to experience this kind of like, um, not really synchronous um, produced sound. Um, things are not in sync and things are imagined sometimes. Sometimes directors would um, not really coincide with what was happening. So I was thinking in, in kind of this vein that maybe we could edit lines with their emotion and see in shots and time those moments when an actor would have their seemingly speak and it, it was up to us to kind of um, match the emotion and the theme content of the scene kind of diegetically so now that they were um, that that you see the, the footage you can hear the voices not as the roles that they were trying to portray but as people already talking about this <laughs> this whole set of ex this this experience it was a painstaking process of um timing things and taking note how many seconds does one um, speak and so on and so forth and coinciding with you know what's the theme of the story of of the of the shot um we weren't um after recreating the original script we we wanted to have a more evocative feeling of of the whole collective experience to try to see what really happened just for her to also kind of speak her own ex experience as if a diary really so it is really nice that this was really about a diary and it, 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 um, it's a diary of the of the of, of the actress not uh, the diary of vietnam rules so that was a starting point and it was 
It was it did. Nice. Did it did it work for her? Yeah, I, I I was always trying to always trying to ask her, um is this is this something that could help you? Um is this something that's still violent still? So we can just forget about this, we can stop. Um, so she saw the film and she said, I think I have it. I, I think I, I don't have things that, um, I don't have words, but everything I hear and hear that I cannot still express, but I think we, we have it. Um, and it's not only her, actually, it's some of her closest friends in the cast as well. She said, yeah, they were really happy with the whole experience. Wonderful. How, like, how much of the film that we saw here was visuals from Cedillo, and how much from you? I don't need to know, like, the specifics on that sort of matter. But, like, to what degree did you uh, film with the current cast? And then another question would be the the having the participants in a film uh, uh, talk about the film as it's being screened for them and that recording become the soundtrack is something that was done in like very early documentary making as well. Uh, and I'm wondering if that uh, in any way related to your process as well or linking to that tradition. But let's do the first part of that first, which is about what your footage versus the deal. So, um... All in all, raw footage was like 20 minutes. Um, so, and I thought that I could only get so much information to do things, to overdub things, typically as dialogue. And there's so much more I think, that, that she, she wants to share. Um, and so we devised kind of a a plan for us to kind of cast fictional characters on the sides, um, characters that we don't necessarily see as extras. So we shot those um, fictional scenes as if people are overhearing, people are just um, there to hear what the, the main cast um, are telling each other, just for us to kind of deepen some of the themes there. So you see, like, um, so we, uh, we, we, we imagine that maybe, maybe the, the, the diary is missing and they got a hold of this and that was a way for us to kind of have her own thoughts into them, into it. Because we had an interview, um, separate interview with, with Liz and she revealed so much um, that she wanted to share. And so we just put it as a, like, kind of a lost diary being read by the people that you don't see, people who are minor in those places. So, so those three um, you people are also actors. Um, in, the sh in the process of shooting also, we kind of tried to this, uh, set the shoot up so that it kind of had this feeling from before that things weren't exact, things weren't uh, things were taking a bit longer and they were wondering what's happening here you know so and so and so forth yeah. what was the second question oh the the, the idea of having the, the cast watch the silent footage after mm -hmm. the fact and then speaking about it that ends up becoming mm -hmm. the soundtrack has sort of yeah I, mean, going back to players. yeah I always thought that um I should, I should I should find things practical, very practical for us. Um, and I think I would be better served to just know these references from other filmmakers, like uh, instead of kind of just really scrap, feeling feeling like um, starting from scratch or devising our own processes. But that's also good. I I really like it when I learn on the way along the way. Um, and see what works and what can work, what we can devise um, from what, what is here with us. 
So it was very, very fulfilling for me because I worked with students in the Philippines who were very open to kind of the process of, of, of discovering what they can do. Otherwise, um, filmmakers who are deeply into in, in efficiency in, in, in industry setting, you know, will, will really take me for, for what, we, what we're doing also. Um, so, yeah, really glad that um, the learning was there. And it's because of that, I, I am also unsure whether this is okay. And so I also consulted her and see if this feels okay. So, and and, and my, I, think, I think my background in music and not studying music, just having the guitar and trying to lose myself and playing the guitar and playing the guitar to sleep sometimes and just improvising and having my own time. It feels right, but at the same time, it feels like it's my own pace or my own way of discovering things on my own and trying to, to put things together in terms of notes, in terms of, you know, a melody that you work. For this film, I'm curious about what interested you in what I would call like the hard to read image, the hard to see, the murky image. So much of the film, you know, is covered by its so age or whether you created it. It's like things you need to really look deep into the image no, to try to make out know. what it is. <laughs> Ever since, because I, when I started making films, I, I, all these like artifacts or, or, or errors or, or things that are not so clear, um, carried so much emotion and rhythm that, uh, that is undeniable and that is there that speaks so much beyond story or, or, or what they're e even saying. It's really uh, things that are not, uh, that are beyond um, what I, I've done, that I, um, I feel that's there. I don't necessarily always tell, uh, say that it's something to be discarded. Instead, something to really include into the process and the beauty of it. I mean, for me, for me in this particular film, uh, I would say like an element of the story for me is, uh, you know, the boat adrift, lost between Vietnam and, and Thailand, and it's become sort of this classic existential drama of them sort of lost in this between space. And there's something about that murkiness of the image, which seems to me to be sort of an appropriate mm -hmm. parallel. You know, I, I, I don't know if this could answer it, but um, I actually, this thought just came to me. I'm teaching and I always tell them, why is the camera so near? <laughs> It's as if we're privileged, we should be near and have the best access to a face all the time with, you know, with full clarity. And upon command, we need to see all the things that we need to, um, to establish that the, the body is expressing. When we can benefit with distance, having distance and things not to be seen all the time. Um, the murkiness for me, in that sense, reminds me, okay, I'm not always there to access this up close and clear. Same time, re um, reminds me about the time that it has traveled as well. So, yeah, and, and, it, and, and not in a way that it's a flashback that is so clear. I mean, to me also, of course, that age on a film, how it is shown, what happens to the nature of the, you know, the dyes and the grain and everything, almost inevitably creates these beautiful images as well. This is raw beauty in the nature mm. of the tones and so forth. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, and you, I, 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 I'm also reminded because I always um, shoot with like low, um, low resolution, like toy cameras as well and um sound that clips because um, it's not an okay mic 
and as it clips, you know, it registers a certain um, feeling of uh, that is not uh, th that has an, a different layer to it, um, just because it cannot reach kind of the whole spectrum of sound that it should receive for you to have enough clarity. Um. Uh, all right. Well, and with any questions from any of you thus thus far, any interesting topics to bring up? Uh, so, what of what of the film was in like Sadia's original? Oh, if you have something else to say. So, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I also uh, got reminded because of the breakiness. I um, we kind of cataloged kind of the levels of murkiness and decay. And I didn't so much care if I needed that shot from kind of a very decayed footage into a scene that has like decay. Um, I wanted the film to take over in that sense that we, I wanted the decay to, the levels of decay to just be clumped together into a kind of a progressive or, 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 or uh, levels of spiraling into the kind of a, an emotion. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to uh, add, add uh, Thank you, John, for being here and speaking this wonderful film. Um, I just noticed there were a lot of themes that felt um, contemporary, even though this is found footage largely from the 80s, like uh, worker exploitation, like you know, sexual exploitation, of you know, um, refugees, um, like summer execution, but then, you know, the Philippines really needed a revolution, but then the revolution, you know, car crash into each other and people get stuck. So I didn't know if you initially in your conversations with the actors knew that these things were going to come up or did it come, did you notice them in the editing or, you know, were they happy accident? Yeah. Any, yeah. Anything about that? Yeah, I knew that. Uh, so this is my fifth film, fifth film, um, and it, I always make things very personally. At the same time, having kind of a, a knowledge that things will seep out in a bigger sense and an experience politically that I know we can we we will speak about it, especially the role of the director. Um, leading to a grand vision, grand destination, an ending, as a dream. Of course, this was 2017, like so politically charged still. So, extending from that, what what do you think Cedillo? I mean, do you, do you know what Castillo was? Castillo was mm -hmm. after originally. Uh, after yeah. in this film and that he and then failed to make it why did it it get completed but uh, this first one, more yeah this one why didn't it the question is why didn't it get the original yeah. oh yeah yes yes because of the, precisely what the actors were saying yeah. that the director was taking his time and he he knows that he has so much power to just dictate the ending of this dream in the career of someone. So one thing, so she brought up also just the nature of like also the sex, sexual exploitation side of it. Um, and that's, I mean, the word that was used in your description was like he was after like this, you know, an erotic cinema as well. But of course, to me, you know, sexual violence is sort of the opposite of erotic. And I'm curious about that tension as well. You mentioned it briefly about keeping in things that are the things that are more violent and some are kept in, but like where also did that tension lie and how did it work out for you? Always reflecting on my own art. Um, and also reflecting back on my own works, especially teaching people about directing, especially precisely about directing. Um, 
it's something that um is always at the back of my mind um on the one hand i really liked um because Ad Castillo as a director um only because he does it his way um not 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 listening to other people uh, at the same time um this is what we get also um it's it's something that <laughs> Um, I'm still trying to understand about myself because I feel like um, no one um, taught me film in, in a school setting and I'm always super careful um, to kind of wield this power, have someone perform even with their bodies. Um, and, simple fact of just going through someone's past to carry out the emotion and visualize an emotion is something that is quite violent as well and so i'm i'm devising other plans to kind of how not to do it um that violently i feel there's violence there as well um yeah this is something that um for me easier for me to deal with because easily something that um, character-wise, I know, um, you know it's, um, quite violent that I feel um, we should really talk to the oldies more about actually. Um, at the same time, <laughs> we'll have that conversation. So, uh, so one thought that I forgot something. How oh, did you have? I, I, I forgot to. Oh, okay. <laughs> I <had a> follow up <laughs> to that. Well, I mean, is it something for you also that, so then you're also on this journey of like figuring out to what way you, it's okay to control other people? What's that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I always, I don't know. Who are the other directors? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, I have all these questions as well. Um, and so I'm still trying to, um, I, for me, I, I, I take those questions into, into the films that I make um, incrementally. Um, Taking control of other people's lives, of course, yeah. Um, even their schedule for the day, making things worth their while. Um, some other directors, well, for example, don't want to involve actors and their characters, you know, not having to reveal the, the script and the, and, 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 and the ending just to have more authentic or more um, honest things. But also some directors are 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 seeing other actors as, as shells so that they don't have to penetrate and don't have to kind of evoke a memory um, emotions and through and through montage I think I'm I'm doing that uh, more so I don't know I'm 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 still trying to also but it's very much more complicated with this one as well because so much of it is an excavation of someone mm -hmm. else's dream and memory path yeah she really wanted to to finish it she, she said just really just wanted to finish um i i'd like to believe that i proceeded with with enough care and caution that's the only thing that yeah gives me peace as well um unfortunately we were still in touch say hello um, actually wants to make another film and make a comeback. Good. You have a film in mind? <laughs> uh, any other questions at the moment? Or Yeah, what other things? Yeah, yeah. So, in the whole film, there's like levels of the way the director says, I guess you feel control the environment. So first, it's the keeping everyone in this 
full island, not feeding them, just mm -hmm. letting them starve mm -hmm. for three to four months. And then it's on a boat for an unspecified amount of time. Mm -hmm. Then it's drugged with a hallucinogen flower. Mm -hmm. uh, how much of these are Liz's direct memories and how much are, are they crowdsourced from the old past? Yeah, um, good question. It's, it's, <laughs> I, heard, I heard from Liz about this, but also corroborated now because we gathered through they all said the same thing basically that that that, that was now that why was castillo i mean so well, we've already addressed that and that's all as well so castillo at this time I, we never really got to um he in this island he was also making another film with him as a, an actor because he could and he had funding for it so i could imagine this was really on pause mm -hmm. while he was doing all other things as well his son was here as well and we got him to also have an interview and with his son it was kind of yeah also for me um quite nice to also befriend the son and also tell him about this and the project and about his father his son died also um, just a few years after Oh, yeah, any more? Uh, yeah, please come to <laughs> the screening on Sunday. That's super special, super personal. And I'd like to thank again the Los Angeles Film Forum and the Michael Foundation for allowing me to have the time to finish that. That was made during the pandemic um, in a diary of the times. Now with Marcos coming back, or has come back. <laughs> so it's a diary from 2020s to, to the present. Um, having me now as a filmmaker and a father trying to devise a plan to make a work out of a breast cleaning cycle and having to have that premise be present <laughs> in kind of ever morphing projects because I had to, I needed to. Well, we look forward to that. Thank you very much for your time tonight. Uh, if Want to talk one on one briefly? If anybody, I think that's fine. And uh, thank you all very much for coming. We'll see you next Thank you.